Welcome to the last Saturday of 2023 and our live stream today. Uh, comfy UI, AI, and all kinds of art and stuff in general. Uh, so today we're going to do some uh, some fun stuff. We're going to do, uh, we're going to take a photo that I did. And it's kind of the, of the backside of a ballerina at an event. And we're going to change her dress. So we're going to try and use like a practical application of AI. And basically, how would we problem solve through this thing? So it's kind of a dress designer's nightmare to come up with really unique ideas. And what I'm going to do is I want to show some ways to do that. Uh, so this is obviously the last live stream of this year, and obviously a, a big year it was. We went from, what, not even two years ago, this wasn't even a thing, uh, to this whole last year has just been amazing fire hose of technology to what will the next year hold? Who knows? Uh, we do have some exciting stuff coming out soon. Like I'll be talking more about the uh, API uh, from Stability, where we now have a video API, as uh, so you can call that, and uh, text to video. Uh, so that's obviously... Uh, groundbreaking and some of the stuff that we're doing with that and where we're going with it is just fantastic so a lot of stuff coming along that way feel free to offer some stuff in the chat here uh, prompt wise again think dress designs things along that lines and i'll show you kind of the workflow and we're going to start from the beginning and work our way through now we're going to start with a basic sdxl layout and we're going to use sdxl we might use the juggernaut model today just because it's different and i like it it's very cool there's a lot of really nice fine tunes that have been done to the sdxl base uh, so that's kind of what we're going to play with today uh, this is this this channel has never been more about, hey, let's just talk about new models that are coming out and things along that lines. There are a few times when I've been very excited about them, um, but maybe I'll do a little bit more of that as as different shows and talk about, hey, this is the model that I think is really interesting this week. I don't know. You tell me what you want to talk about or what you want to hear. Uh, so a couple other things, too. Uh, thanks to all the people who are supporting this program. So obviously a big list at the beginning there. Uh, we are one member shy of 300. So that's a huge number uh, so thank you guys so much for keeping this thing going and your support that actually makes this show happen. Another one uh, today, uh, we have a sponsor today, actually. Uh, Gigabyte sent me a, an, a 17X laptop to do AI inference, and we used it last live stream. We're going to use it again this week. Uh, so I have pretty much abandoned my MSI laptop, which was only like two months old uh, for this one. And they're pretty much the same model, the same chipset, same memory. So actually, this has two gigabyte more of video RAM in it than that one did. Actually, four gigabyte more. Um, but this laptop just feels so much nicer. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit. I'm not going to make it a big ad thing, but it is the laptop we're going to be using for inference today. So I'm going to be showing this screen here. We'll have my uh, local machine, and then we're going to switch to the laptop's local machine where it's going to be doing all the heavy lifting, and we're going to be using this machine for the UI. Uh, that, I'm doing that basically so that the live stream doesn't trip up as we're working with it, we don't have lag occur because we're trying to do live streaming at the same time that we're doing this. Uh, what's my regular live stream schedule? It's supposed to be Saturdays at 10. 
Uh, I did not do last week, obviously, because it was Christmas time and had family in town and uh, my wife would have shot me. So <laughs> best to just kind of skip it and live to see another day. Uh, so obviously getting back into it. So it'd be uh, pretty much every Saturday. Now, I do have a lot coming up in January, February for speaking engagements. So I'll be in Vermont, I'll be in California, I'll be in Texas, I'll be in yeah, one other one in there coming up, uh, Orlando. So I have all these other ones that uh, this is for the photography associations and uh, using AI in the photography business, which is kind of why I wanted to do this one today is to show more about practical application of how to use this to problem solve. Now, that's important because if you're looking to get into AI as something is a full time job, you're not going to find that that a lot of people are looking for, you know, people who can prompt engineer waifu models because that seems to be the thing everybody's into. I see all these these posts on Reddit. It's like, hey, what do you think of my new AI girlfriend? I'm like, I'm not even going to comment, and I'm just going to I'm just going to breeze right on by that one. But there are a lot of practical applications that can be done for AI in industry, especially design. So architecture, dress designs, fabric designs, patterns. How do we do that? What do we do with that? Uh, so today, what I'm going to do is talk about kind of problem solving that. And I'm just I haven't done this yet, so this is kind of like I I want to challenge myself to just kind of do it. And I like these live streams for that because it feels more genuine. Like we're, let's just work on it together. And you guys oftentimes make great suggestions. So very chatty chat is what I like to see there. Like I'm keep looking at it and I, I almost wish I could have it convert to voice right away. So I could hear it in my head as you guys type, which would be, eh, that's this next year, right? Where we have the automatic translations. Uh, so, um, so that's what we're going to kind of do today. Uh, we do have, by the way, some, um, some updates as well. I have found a node that will allow me to use a local large language model inside of Comfy. So instead of using the OpenAI version, which is what I posted a couple months ago, and I still use it from time to time, where basically I'll make a rough description like, what's the most interesting thing I've seen at this abandoned hospital, and have ChatGPT come up with some really creative answer and then give us the prompt and, and render the image, which is kind of fun. It's like a treasure hunt in a lot of ways. And I found a, a couple of cool ones over the time that I've done this. But I've always wanted to kind of do it with a local language model. I know you guys have said the same thing, like I don't want to pay OpenAI or have an ABI key. How can I do this? Uh, this is a way to do that or get around that. So uh, that's kind of the the goal here. So let's let's get going on it, and we'll um, I'll show you kind of what I'm going to do, and I obviously keep the questions flowing as we're doing this because it's it's as my it's as much my show as it is yours, right? Um, so let's switch over here. Uh, so again, thanks to Gigabyte again for sending of the laptop. Uh, it has been fantastic. I have to tell you my favorite thing about this thing, which is going to sound kind of weird, is I don't know what this trackpad is made of, but it's like freaking amazing. Like it it feels it's such a joy to use and it's such a dumb little thing to mention. But uh, also the keyboard on this thing is great. The MSI keyboard, they have a transparent key, so they all glow. This one just uses transparent letters. But I had trouble kind of seeing the keyboard when the LED wasn't on. So kind of an interesting usability thing. Anyway, I won't dwell on that too much, but I do want to mention them because they, they are obviously going to be a star of the show here for a while. Um, all right, so I have two inference uh, setups here. We have one that is, this is the laptop. This is the one without the share button over here. And then we have this one. This is my local machine here that is using, um, obviously, my PC. Now, my PC is actually in the other room. The only thing I do is feed through the, the wall, just my monitor cable and my keyboard and my mouse and what have you. That way it keeps the sound floor kind of low in here for, you know, obviously making audio and video. The thing about this, I have to warn you, though, is this laptop, like it's running real, it's running really nice now and I have it in what's called normal mode, but it has fans on it that can move this desk away from the wall. Uh, so depending on what's going on, this might get kind of loud. Now, I really like the fact that I can turn the fans down, but that will suffer performance. So uh, we'll have to kind of decide if it becomes annoying, you need to say something, you need to say, hey, this is, uh, this is too loud. Let me know. And I'll turn the fans down and we'll just, it'll take a you know, quarter second longer to render the image. Uh, but at least that way, I'm not annoying you with the audio. Because the first thing I do is turn a video off because I hate the audio. Right? I'd love to see the setting in uh, focal, uh, camera focal angle and angle. Okay, well, I, I, I will show all the stuff here. So let's start out with this. So this is the image that I, that I took. This is a, an event called Texas School that takes place in um, Addison, Texas every year. And it's like 20 some odd um, teachers. And then each uh, each teacher has about eh, about 20, 28 students or so. And you have the same teacher every day for eight to 10 hours a day. And I'm one of those teachers. And you usually teach photography, advanced composition, uh, lighting, uh, actually kind of even the fine art of photography because uh, a lot of photographers focus on the technical aspects, but we don't get training in like why we do what we do. 
uh, what things you can use to emotionally move someone with an image and so on. Uh, so this was obviously a lighting tech demo and I'm showing this. Um, this image was just a test image and I kind of passed it by, but then I started thinking, you know, this would be an interesting one for dress design because it's a very simple dress design. It also shows some of the weaknesses with AI and our rendering capability. So I thought that was a, a kind of an interesting thing for today. Uh, at least I think it will show that. Uh, again, this is something I haven't done yet uh, with this one, so we'll see how it turns out. But uh, we shall see. Uh, I was looking at the, um, real quick looking at the chat here. Uh, how do you do photo bashing and comfy uh, UI, uh, multi-segment masking, control net, automatic? Yeah, we're going to do some of that today, actually. So that's a, that's a good time to ask that question. AK Creative Agency and uh, Squirrel. Um, it's all good, Scott. I think your vocal processing is uh, cutting a lot of the background noise. Good. Awesome. Uh, do you use an efficient node for the A AIO prompt? I do not. Um, we're going to work. I try and stay away from the efficiency prompts except for uh, if you're referring to those nodes anyway, for the um, for the actual graph, like I only use them for the XY plotting for the most part. Uh, do you think the old AI models are going to be banned after the application of the EU AI Act? I have no idea. It, that's that is so beyond my pay grade. I don't even think about it. We have no effect on it. So whatever it is, we'll just deal with it. You know, there's like so many things in life. You can sit and worry about the price of tea in China, which affects a lot of your life. You know how the the amount things are made, how much they're made for importing costs, all that kind of stuff. But yet there's nothing you can do about it. So don't freak out about it. Just whatever the decision is, we'll just deal with it. Right. Hopefully they're being well educated, which I'm not sure. We'll see. And then uh, hopefully they'll make the right decision. The thing about this that you know, so you go off in a smile, political tirade. I'm not going to talk about so much about the text to image properties, but but AI in general, the amount of really great um, chemistry that has been done already. I think got 330,000 new crystal formations have been discovered by AI. That's like 800 man years of work to figure out all these formations. Those are used for making better memory, making better chip designs, making computers faster, quantum computers, all that kind of stuff. Just got a giant boost forward because of AI. Uh, so to kind of come up with the, hey, we're going to ban it here, doesn't mean that every country in the world is going to ban it. So if the EU decides to ban AI in some way, shape or form, it doesn't mean that Russia won't or the United States won't or, you know, any other country. So we could actually lose placement. You know, we could fall behind the rest of the world because we're trying to regulate it so much. So we'll see how that turns out. I'm, I'm hopeful uh, that there'll be education on that side, but I won't go off on that too much. Anyway, so I've done here is I've just exported this image. So again, it's it's not an overly complicated picture. It's very simple. Um, but I just kind of wanted to show you what it was so you knew what I was doing. All right. So on this laptop over here, we have, uh, I haven't really done much of anything uh, with it. So again, this one is going to be the local machine and this is the laptop. Uh, the laptop does not have the share button. So one of the cool things that I have uh, in, in my other one is, is I can load up if we, if we load the default, for example, we just get this thing, which is fine for most of the time. But if we really want to benefit from having the two prompt, the uh, positive prompts, we need to use the other, the other workflow. So this is a workflow I've given you guys before. It's in the community area here on YouTube. Uh, and once again, thank you to all the people who support the channel. Those links in there for those, for these graphs are uh, available in the community area. And again, for what, five bucks a month, you can download all of them and then leave, right? <laughs> so all those, plus all the live streams you've done in the past, this live stream will stay up for a couple days or a couple hours, depending on how things go. And then, you can go ahead and, and access all the past live streams we've done on there. So again, thank you to the guys. So I think we're one member shy of 300. So if you join during the stream, by the way, your name will pop up on the screen and it'll be pretty awesome. So somebody should do that, make themselves famous. That'd be pretty neat. Anyway, what I want to do is I like this graph quite a bit. It uses a couple of neat things. First of all, it uses this pipe here. Uh, so this image pipe is nice because it can just take this one pipe and lead it away and continue working without having to drag all these other... Um, conditionings and so on around. So I like this case sampler from the impact pack. Again, you can see where these are from. Uh, I have a few, quite a few custom nodes installed. We're going to try and avoid using them uh, as much as possible. Use the core of Comfy, but there are some amazing nodes out there. And I really like this, this uh, Dr. Lieutenant Data. His stuff has been fantastic, including the manager. So I really want to support the guy. His YouTube channel is uh, no sound and it's pretty hard to follow. Uh, but I'm trying to like follow up with his his content and add videos covering it uh, so you guys can understand what he's doing uh, because I think he's making great headway in a lot of areas. Uh, but 
Uh, we're also using a global seed. So this will replace the seed in every single one of these controls. Uh, now I have it set to be fixed because as we're experimenting here, we do not want to, to have a moving target, right? We wanna set the target and so we can kind of see what we're doing with the nodes and not so much hope Hope that, oh my, oh, look at that. We solved the problem with hands. Well, no, it just happened that you got a random seed that looked good. This way, we have a much better control on things when we're only moving. Now, eventually we'll move this to increment or something else. You can also do uh, on here, there's there's some other ones too. Like you can increment, increment for each node or randomize for each node independently. I'm just going to leave them all set to nine and be done with it. I like this workflow. So what I did is I saved it off, right? I just hit save. I just called it workflow. That's fine. Now I went into this comfy, this is on the laptop. I can go and I can grab this and drag it down into here. And now I have this. Now I can do save, save as a workflow. And we're gonna call this SDXL base. Now, whenever I bring open uh, a new comfy and I wanna start, uh, if I don't have the default change, which by the way, you can change now, um, the Python, uh, Python Go S um, group of nodes has the ability to replace the default. Um, I don't know. Do I even have that installed in here? I do. But down here, you can see what the default workflow would be, and we can change it now to SDXL base and hit close. All these additional ones with these strange icons here have been added because of that Python Go S. Or Python Go S. <laughs> he works for stability with me now, too. I, I haven't really talked to the guy at all, but um, I talk to Comfy quite often, but uh, I haven't really met this dude. Um, but all these all these extra ones with the little snake are from that, uh, that uh, add-on. And this is one I really like because now when we go and we just hit load default and it says, okay, we're going to get this workflow every time because this is where I want to start. This one is the the point of departure for everything we're going to be working on or everything that I work on. Um, all right, let me catch up on the st uh, stats here a little bit. Um, been learning comfy. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Like my live streams. Great. Uh, by the way, all the, uh, all the very niche, your content uh, and the way you explain things is top notch. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I do have uh, I do have one more video coming on the, the the laser cutter in the Catan board. If you haven't been following that, I actually finished it and I gave it to my daughter for Christmas. So it's all gone now. I'm going to start a new one, uh, but I think it's be a Monopoly board. Uh, but I think I might make one more Catan board, too. I want to do a steampunk one, but uh, I used AI to help me with ideation for those pieces. And then I would create the pieces in laser laser cutting software called Lightburn, and then we take and burn them. So it's actually, I like the practical application, and this is where I think the jobs are going to be available for people. How you take what we're learning from this and applying it to practical applications, manufacturing, designs, areas of ideation, that's where this is going to win. The whole imagery part of it is fantastic, but again, it's very easy to do, and differentiation, market differentiation is important in every, every job. So let's find a way to make this work. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, let's see, by the way, uh, so, mm -hmm. uh, is it possible to use advanced stuff uh, with vanilla Comfy? Yeah, all the time. I'm trying to keep it clean without other nodes. You know what? The thing about Comfy is the core the core system is very good, right? It, but Comfy only has so much time in the day. And the idea was to make it so it could be expanded. So don't think of it like you're dirtying the product by adding custom nodes. It's intended to be that way, right? It's a back end first and a front end second. All right, so let's uh, let's play with this thing today. So again, we're using the laptop here. I'm just using an internal IP address. And when I launched Comfy, I launched it with a different, um, I covered it last live stream. I can break it out if you need me to, but uh, basically you remove the portable thing and put the word listen in there. And uh, that's it. Now this laptop is going to be doing all the all the work. And I'll go to the screen from that uh, from time to time so you can see it. All right. So what I want to do is I want to load in, uh, we're going to do image, load, and we're going to load in, not that. We're going to load in the picture of that girl. Uh, so I'm just going to grab it and drag. All right. I did I did create some fun little um, things, by the way. I have a friend I was doing. Uh, I was trying to make like cute little dolls of things. I made this of her. Um, and I this whole, this is just all prompt mechanics, by the way. I'm not really using um, any sort of a, a Laura or anything like that. I, I try and avoid using Laura's for the most part uh, because I... The, the base model is very flexible. It, you can make, you can prompt usually what you want unless you're looking for something really specific, in which case that's when the lore should be used. Uh, looking at the workflows that people are posting for the uh, openart.ai competition, uh, which we're, I think the finals are being discussed tomorrow and then the winner will be announced, uh, or winners, I should say. Uh, the, the idea that you load every lore you can have just to load it is a bad strategy, by the way. 
And I see a lot of people doing that. I see like some of these workflows have 30 LORAs being loaded up. Like, what are you doing exactly? You're just replacing the blank model or the, the base model. All right, so what I wanna do ultimately here, I wanna see if we can be successful is we want to replace this dress with other dress designs, right? So that's gonna be our goal. So we're gonna start from this. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is figure out how we can do this. So let's, let's fail first and work our way forward to kind of show where the strengths and weaknesses of things are. Hey, woohoo, Charles, you are probably number 300 there. I think you're three, number 300 on the membership chain. So, whoop, thank you very much, sir. All right. So uh, one of the things we need to do is we need to work forward. So I'm going to take and kind of work my way through the problem solving of this. And uh, we, we'll probably fail. I mean, we're going to fail initially, I'm sure, because what we're going to do is probably the wrong direction initially. But let's look at the strengths and weaknesses of each node as we move forward. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, you're 300. Thank you, sir. All right, so the first thing I would probably do is let's look at uh, what would we do if we just wanted to simply take this and uh, we're just going to use this as a an in or a denoising process. Well, that's probably not going to work very well because it's just going to denoise it. We want her to stay the same. By the way, I want the same pose. I want the same girl effectively for every one of these. Now. Later on, I don't mind it so much if we have to change your hair color or things along that lines. But for the most part, I want her pose to be the same. Think of it like you're trying to sell it to a dress designer and say, I've come up with 30 or 300 or 30,000 dress designs for you based on this. They're not going to sit there and go, wow, these poses are really interesting. What's this? No, no. I want you to look at the dresses, not the poses. So again, eliminate variables, static pose for each one. How do we do it? And we're not going to use open pose in case you're thinking that's the control that I'm reaching for. That's not my plan now. And we may have to go that way, but that's not my initial reaction to this thing. By the way, if you like this stream and you're enjoying this, please click the like button. It's really interesting. You, you kind of forget the fact that's kind of like the way to clap to these things. So if you enjoy this, please click the like button. This is a hundred people watching and I have 25 likes. So 75 people, you're either putting you to sleep already or you forgot about the like button. So I appreciate that. All right. So how do we do that? Well, we want to replace this latent with this image, right? So I'm going to duplicate this image. Uh, just because we know we're going to need it a couple different times here. So how would we do that? Obviously, we're going to re-encode it back into a, a regular image, right? So, or a regular latent. So here we go. And now we can replace this up here and we're good to go. Now from here, we can go ahead and decode it back into a regular image. Like, just like you would expect. Very, very simple. Now let's talk about this for a second here. What are the things I do not know about this and and don't come up with a solution that works for one image like hey this works great just for this one image uh what what's wrong with my workflow well I don't I can't trust that the image you're handing me is actually going to work right I don't know that it's going to work and SDXL has is some sizes it works better than others and I'm kind of like even going to ignore that part of this for this at this time but how big is this image I don't know. It could be four gig it could be 25,000 pixels my camera shoots 40,000 pixels I think on the long edge that's too big, right? We can't do that. So let's change this. And there's a really great, again, base node. We just type in edge here. You can see, oops, or side, sorry, side. There we go. Image scale to side. And I like this node quite a bit. Pop this in here. And then we can say that I want the longest side to be 1024. There we go. This helps kind of protect us from someone handing us an image and we're trying to demo, hey, here's a way you can do great dress designs. Well, here's an image I'd like you to use. Okay. And then everything is really slow. And they're like, wow, we don't really want to buy your service or product. This is dumb. Uh, well, the reason is because this image was too damn big. So let's fix it first. And you can see where this comes from. This is from the Durfu node set. Again, it, there, there are some, the impact set, the WAS node suite, this Durfu set, and there's a MTB, I think it's called. That's another really good one that has so many core components that other people are using that I think that they're they're kind of mandatory. Like you have to have them because other node designers or developers are taking bits and pieces, they're crediting them. And, and by the way, I sure hope that all of these people eventually learn how to turn on the GitHub uh, donation page because I give to the people who, who help me do my job better, right? I mean, that, just like the people who are pay, paying to be members of this channel, I appreciate you. And I want to give that appreciation back to these people here. You know, I, I paid I paid uh, Dream, uh, stability when I would use Dream Studio before I was you know, employed by them. I paid for that product. I, pay, I still pay for MidJourney, although I haven't used it in, in a while. Um, I do like version six a bit, but 
Um, it's it's not. Uh, I think the the direction they're going is interesting. It's it's uh, more photographic, right? Which I know a lot of people are really into. I'm not into that. I I don't need photorealistic part in my life because I have a camera and I get hired to use that camera. And I, I love the artistic aspect of it, though. That's the parts that are refreshing to me, the parts I really like. All right, let me catch up on comments here a little bit. Um, uh, you found one node uh, all the time that is image to image is save uh, from WS node suite. Nice to be able to control the save file. Yeah, so they have a, there's a, a much nicer save in there. Uh, the WAS Node Suite has a lot of great image manipulation tools, post-production tools like contrast and black and white adjustments and so on. A lot of great stuff in there. Um, uh, what's the node you can only control one side of the size of the image, but not both the height and width? Yeah, that's this one here. That's this image scale to side. So this the length of the longest side. Uh, that's really all I'm doing here. And I'm not cropping it after that. I'm just kind of scaling it or, or whatever here. I would choose use the nearest exact. So. Uh, so that's what we're doing there. Okay, so will this work? Okay, and let's let's look at the prompt here. This prompt is what we had in from before. So let's type in, uh, um, let's do um, ballerina. Well, I need a prompt from you guys too. I'd like a, a prompt for dress design. Say female. Female, red hair. Long, coral. This is the color coral, by the way, that dress. Dress with stripes, blue stripes. Uh, let's do, yeah, blue stripes. Or do you, blue stripes because it's really obvious if we get it wrong, right? Because <laughs> blue stripes on the coral dress are going to look pretty hideous. Uh, so there we go. And uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Oh, we have the longest edge here is 1152. So let's actually change this to 1152. Match. Um, because I'm using this SDXL uh, resolution, again, this comfy math node suite, fantastic node suite. I use it all the time. Are you involved with the HUG course in stability in January? Not yet. <laughs> There's so many parts of stability that I'm involved with. So I did quality assurance basically for all the modalities, but some more than others, like my passions are and, and the things that I do, um, different things along that lines. But you know, I like, for example, I'm really big into BioML part two. I love the chemistry and physics part of what we're doing there. That is going to change the world. This is also going to change the world, right? But that's going to like it, it make us live longer to enjoy this even more, right? Uh, it's a great combination of things. All right. So if we, if we do this, the, the thing we got to pay attention to here is how much we're denoising that original image, right? So if we denoise it 100%, that means we're probably not going to end up with much of anything. Let's just try it and see what happens. Again, we all the reference is being handled by this laptop over here. Uh, so we can switch to that at any time if you want to see it. Oh, I'm using a little screen here. I got to switch the big one first from my face to this. Uh, so this is the laptop's thing. All right, done. Value not in list. Looks like I have to go and oh, I did not update. I did not update the. Sorry, I got too many switches here. I'm trying to figure out what the hell I'm doing. Uh, I did not update where this model is. So uh, I'm just going to use, let's use Juggernaut today. Fun model. And I think version version seven he just announced in Reddit is about to come out. So whatever he's making there. Over at this laptop to see. Funny. And now the fans are going to start to kick in a little bit. So you let me know if it's a problem. Well, it's because I had the wrong path, right? That was not the laptop's fault. It was my fault. Um, so. Hey, look at that. It is a redheaded girl, just like we asked for. And it has absolutely nothing to do with, <laughs> with what we wanted. Um, so let's change, by the way, the, where this um, feed is going here. Workflow gallery. Where is... We want this on the left. I'm just going to move it over there uh, so we can kind of see what it's doing. Oh, look at that. Learning Core just became a new member. Woo, thank you. All right, so we're going to make this smaller and stick it over here. All right, so this is not helpful, right? Uh, it is not the, uh, it's not the girl, it's not the dress. And every time we click this button, if we have a different seed, uh, we're going to end up with a completely different girl. That's not helping our process at all, right? I don't know what happened here, but looks like it's the same girl, but that's a weird picture. All right, so let's fix that. How would we fix that? Well, 
the denoising process here is probably the first thing people to reach for and say, well, what if I just 70% denoise this? Okay, better. But again, the pose is wrong. It's not helping us out real, real well. So we're having issues here. And obviously you're, you think you know where I'm going here and this is where I'm going to go is I'm going to go with a control net. We're going to start with the control net and that should solve hopefully a lot of our problem, but I'm going to do it in a way I don't think you expect I'm going to do. Uh, so let's add that in. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to go back to probably just the regular empty latent here um, just for the time being. So if I, if I click prompt, do the prompt again here, you can see that it has absolutely nothing to do um, with this picture. They're unrelated. Get rid of all my copies of this. All right, so let's start with the control net. So, uh, and we'll see if I have all the control net on this machine. By the way, if that fan is too loud, you need to let me know, right? It's not really loud right now. I can put it in meeting mode and it'll be a lot quieter, um, but we'll see. All right, so control net apply. Actually, I'm gonna use the advanced. I like the advanced one. So the difference between the advanced one and the regular one is we can, we can determine when we start and when we end as well as the overall strength of it. That is very cool. And you don't think about that. If you hold, say, the um, the canny, which is the outside edges of things, and you're holding it at 100% the entire duration, you're not going to get a lot of wiggle room in the model. But maybe you want a little bit of wiggle room. You want to let the model be creative. Or maybe you have some loras and you want those loras to be able to chance to have a ch chance to shine. If you don't have any wiggle room in the start and stop, you're not going to have that wiggle room, right? So... We want to have this, this advanced one. And this is the one I use pretty much all the time. I don't really use the other one at all. Uh, now, again, I'm not sure if I have these things in here, but let's, we'll see how it goes. All right, so uh, conditioning-wise, I need to pull the conditioning up for the positive. And you'll notice that the advanced control net also uses the negative. Usually a control net doesn't need the negative, uh, but the advanced one does use it. So we're just going to go ahead and, and let it happen. Go, our positives and our negatives. So again, we're just putting it right here. Again, this is the reason I love Comfy is we now know where the control net sits. It's not a pixel level thing. It's not a model manipulation thing. It sits in the conditioning pieces of this. And again, Comfy says, you know, if you if you talk to the guy or read his blog, that he wrote this to understand how, how stable diffusion works, right? So it's not that we're becoming pr great prompt engineers. And, and Automatic 11.11 is a great product, and I have it still installed. Well, I haven't used it in a while. I and mean, it does some things better because it's easier to use in some cases, like training, for example. I'd rather do training actually with a command line than I would using a UI just because it's resources. But you're really kind of open, you know, uh, you kind of shut down and you're not open to how it actually functions. And I think you're just checking the use a Laura box and you pick it and you pick the weight. That's great. But you now know where this goes, which I think is more powerful, right? Uh, as far as an image goes, let's just use this one. But we can't just use this one in its current state, right? What's the control net we're going to apply? Let's go load in some control nets here. And I put in just two today. I put in a canny and I put in the depth. So let's start with Canny and start with that one. Now, in order to use Canny, I need to actually hand it the, the pre-processed version of this. So if I just type in Canny, you can see that there's a few. There's one that comes with Inspire, and this is for segs. This is for segmentation of, out of different things. We're not going to be doing that at this point. Uh, there's one here and one here, and there's there's three. Look at that. So there's one in the core. Uh, what are these other ones here? I'm not even sure. This one comes with the WAS node suite, and it has... Uh, looks like a, uh, another thresholding capability and a different default, which is interesting. And there's another one here too. What's this, one? this is from uh, Comfy UI's control net. Um, this is the uh, alternative control net, I think, or the auxiliary control net. This one, same idea, but this one has a resolution on it, which is, hey, that's really interesting. Let's try that one. I haven't tried that one before. What's our resolution at? We're 1152. Let's use that. That should give us a much more accurate outline. At least that's what I would imagine this does. So in order to find out, let's just go ahead and do a preview off of it and do a Q prompt real quick and then stop the prompt. E is what we get. So that's that's very nice. It has all the finger joints, um, outline of the dress for the most part. Uh, again, we can affect the high and low resolutions here to see if we can get a better shot of the dress here. Uh, so we want to keep these up or down. We're just going to play with them. Okay, we want to go down until we get what we think is a good outline of the dress. I want to see her arms, for example, that she has two arms. 
And if I go with too much detail, by the way, it's going to start, the image is going to start to suffer because again, that wiggle room is going to go away. But I think this is a, this is really kind of an interesting start. So let's just start here and see where it goes. And I'm going to go with this preprocessor here. So this came, this comes with the auxiliary control net models, I believe. Uh, so again, if we go into manager, all custom nodes, this again, this is the laptop. So there are not a lot of custom nodes in here. I haven't gone nuts with it yet. Like I install a lot of stuff just to try it. Uh, Sebastian on his channel does the same thing. He installs a lot of neat nodes and tries them and plays with them. And there's a lot of great discovery to be made in there. Um, I don't have so much the time to do a lot of that. Um, but every so often I'll find one. He's He's been a really good resource for stuff, by the way. So there's so many good channels out there. Um, and Mateo, the guy who wrote the uh, IP adapter, he's, his channel's just starting up. He's got, I think, five or 6,000 members already too. So that's growing great. Um, great guy too. We work with him. Uh, we were paired up to judge the openart.ai uh, competition, which again, I think tomorrow's the last day of judging and then this will go to the awards. But there's this uh, control net auxiliary preprocessors. This is where we're getting that node from. That's that. So this is what we're going to use. We're going to use this. We're just going to plug that into image here because we need to have it pre-processed in this canny. This is the canny method. There's another one called HED, which is kind of a soft outline of things. Um, it's a little more um, gestural, I would say, but not as accurate. Okay, so so let's just try this and see what happens, right? So if we just cue this prompt, we still have the denoise set low. So let's turn the denoise up to 100% again. I'm just gonna cancel. And here the laptop is starting to kind of Little frisky over there. And I didn't change any of these settings. So let's do uh, DPM 2M Keras here. That works really well for SDXL. And 20 steps is fine. CFG of 8 is fine. And we end up with that. All right, so I'm going to move things around a little bit here and just so we can kind of see. I'm going to borrow this image again and put it over here just because it's our baseline for everything and how we're going to judge success. So remember the the mock-up here, the idea is we are going to a company that wants us to, they want to hire us to do the AI to help them generate dress designs. So they want as many dress designs for their upcoming line as possible uh, using the same form factor, but they're looking at inventing different textile, uh, uh, textures or textiles, right? All right, so how did we do? How did we do so far? So uh, interesting, we have something going on down here and this is, uh, this is an interesting part. This, this is one of those things that I don't know how to get past, right? It's, uh, it's going to be a, a problem for a while in my mind, unless somebody's got great ideas and you have to try them. Don't just like throw them in the chat. Cause trust me, I've thought this through, but the, I've run into this in numerous times is if it can't see the feet, it assumes the feet are missing and it needs to add the feet. Now we're going to try another technique to avoid that, but, um, I think we're going to run into it pretty much all the time. So, um, in this case, it shows you if we're going to do this type of situation, we try and get the feet into the shot so that the, the models all work out and we don't end up with any weird surprises. Um, anyway, so let's try another. In fact, I'm going to let's let's put this on an increment. In fact, um, I was thinking that I would turn this to turbo and see if we can get it to work in turbo, but I'm not sure um, if that's going to function or not. But let's try it uh, just because it'd be kind of neat. We can pound these out very quickly. Now, the turbo model is going to be a 512 by 512 model. So we may end up asking, yeah, we may end up causing ourselves some, well, let's not even try it then. I was just thinking that would be kind of cool. But I also have the Dream Shaper mod, uh, Dream Shaper model, which I just downloaded this morning. I've never played with it before. Um, but uh, there's a few other ones. This uh, Realistic Vision, um, I again haven't, I don't think I've played with them. I think I played with that one early on and it didn't have a VAE with it. So it was kind of weird. Again, you guys, you guys probably deal with this stuff more than I do. Um, I, I use the base models. There's somebody posted on Reddit. They're like, hey, we should have a competition and say who can make the best image with the base SDXL 1.5. I'm like, I'll play with that game all day long. Like I have so many of my greatest, I think my greatest pictures are SDXL 1.5 vanilla with no Laura's or anything. I'm really liking that. All right. So that's okay. She, she, uh, she needs some sun now or some vitamin D supplements, I think. But uh, yeah. Otherwise, it looks like we're, we're doing okay. Again, it's trying to add the feet, uh, but this is looking pretty good. Now, we talked earlier about this. Um, I'm just going to, I'm going to move the controls around here so we can kind of see what we're doing. Let's talk about the strength of this. So let's look at ending it early. So let's, let's, let's end this at, say, 
75% of the way through, what will it do? So it should create, use the canny first, hold the line, and then let it go, right? Well, now she flipped around. That's interesting. So do we need to put that in our prompt? Maybe. Facing away from camera. Don't know if that's going to make a difference. Try it again. So you see it get through about 75% of this, and then it just kind of does its own thing. Like for here, uh, this is really interesting. It cut holes through the dress here, because it could. Uh, so that's not a huge difference. So let's keep the unpercentage the same. But let's change, oops, let's change the beginning. So this means that the model can do anything it wants to for the first 25% of this, right? Anything, we'll see what happens. Yeah, you'd think the negative of no visible feet, uh, it won't do anything, guarantee you. Uh, the reason is because it doesn't think about that. Um, in fact, we're gonna have our new, no feet, or just feet. Feet, shoes, legs, any of those things, right? Um. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. But so you can see here, it went off on a wild tangent for the first 25% and then it tried to bring in the control net and hold this, which is pretty weird. But um, there is a lot to be said for letting it do this. Now, not so much with canny, but let me show you in a second with depth because it's really interesting. So again, you can see it, it started out really weird and then it kind of came back around. Hey, that time it worked, look at that. Isn't that funny if that prompt would be the thing that actually works? Again, we can't say that, oh my God, we've solved the problem, use this and your negative prompt forever, it might just be the seed, right? Yeah, it might just be the seed. Maybe he did it. Maybe it's her entire damn lower body that I put in there. But if, when we hit prompt, if you watch this, watch that it's going to draw a completely different image and then it's going to use those pieces of image to try and glue together. Yeah, see, it didn't. We still get shoes and whatever this is. But it's that freedom of that first 10% or whatever that allows it to kind of go off on a weird tangent and then try and bring it back around. Why that's interesting is not so much with this control net, but with another one. So let's, uh, let's look at that one. I'm going to break this apart back over here we can we can actually group these things add a group here we can kind of like doing this my way of doing things now you can do you can right click now and then go to where is it used it in a bunch in the past but it's an order here well there was one in here that allowed the group to snap to all of these, but uh, I can't find it right now. And that might be an option again that's added by another. Or is it in here? Here it is, fit group to nodes. There we go, that's Rosa. A little tight. Okay, but there's this one. All right, so I like this one, this one's fine, but let's do a different one. Uh, let's, uh, let's do a different control net. So I'm just gonna duplicate this control net here, but we're gonna use a different one. We're gonna use control net loader. We're gonna use the depth one. I think the depth one is probably the coolest control net, one of the coolest control nets from an actual functionality standpoint of any of the other ones. Like I just think it's got so much more going for it capability wise. All right, so uh, let's do depth. Now we've got a whole bunch of, let's type, why don't we? Depth, we've got Midas, Laris, Zoe. Uh, Midas is probably the most accurate, but it's the slowest uh, in my, in my, uh, my experience. So let's just try it. Let's just do an image here. And then we're going to, again, if we're using a control net that is going to be doing depth, we require a depth estimation to be done first. And this is from the WAS node suite. Uh, I found this one to be very slow, but very good, right? So you get what you get, what you pay for more or less. I'm going to disconnect these things and let's just run our positive. What am I doing here? That's a two from here. So we need the from the positive from the negative again because it is an advanced one do the positive don't don't mix those up by the way i've i've done the the negative to the positive before and you get some sort of 
totally bizarre thing. I'm just going to disconnect these completely so you can see that they're not in play, right? So this is the this is what we're dealing with. And let's again, let's do a, a preview so you can see what the depth estimation looks like. And I'm going to leave these again set to one. And uh, we're going to start at one, start at zero and end at 100, just like we would expect it to. And again, it's taking its time. And it looks like it died. It All right, I don't think I have the minus depth map on here, so I didn't think that through. Let's do a depth, another one. Again, I haven't tried this yet, so let's do the Laris one. That does. Preview. All right, that one's pulling the that one's pulling the model down. At least the other one did not. Go ahead and check them on your content comments here. Um, are there any nodes to save and play with vector images? Not that I've. Not that I've found. I haven't really gone looking for them, but I would like to at some point because, again, my laser cutter uses an SVG file, so uh, that's the best bet. By the way, we have 150 people watching, but only 64 likes. So if you like this and you like what I'm doing here, please click the like button. Just show your appreciation that way. Okay, um, talking about samplers, do you activate uh, the restart sampler? I have. I have used restart. Restart, the actual paper on restart sampling is actually very interesting. So there's, uh, there's some stuff to be... Again, I'm trying not to move too many things today. So it doesn't get too complicated, but um, is there a new version of SDXL? Uh, not not publicly available. There's 1.6 that's available uh, on our API, but it is not a released model at this point. Uh, I do not know dates on any of that stuff, so I, I can't tell you. Um, thanks for videos. I learned so much. Well, thank you for watching. appreciate it. It's a cool dress. I think so, too. Uh, full length, uh, no visible feet. Yeah, you can see it worked. Um, I'm not really sure if, that's, uh, if, the, if we win or not. We'll find out. But this depth map actually helps with that too, usually. Um, yep, there's our depth preview. This is SDXL. We're using SDXL all the time. We're not using 1.5 for anything at this point. And a lot of people are like, well, 1.5 is, is so much better. 1.5 has been out a lot longer, right? There's a lot more support for it. There's a lot more models, there's a lot more LORAs, there's a lot more stuff. So yes, of course, it's going to be better for most things, but um, not for... Uh, not for anything even practical. Moving forward, we want to stay on the bleeding edge of stuff. If you're using 1.5, you're already almost a year behind, right? So why would you do that? Uh, just stay with current. Stay with current. Will there be a 1.5 turbo? I don't think so. I mean, I we, we've we called 1.5 models deprecated in our mind, so I don't think we'll ever see anything from 1.5 that'll be added on. But again, it's not. I'm not the strategist for the company. But in my mind, it's it's deprecated. So I'm moving past it. Yes, it's a cool model. And yes, I still love what it creates. And again, some of my favorite images are 1.5, but... That's, that's just what it is. Okay, here we go. Um, this is looking pretty good. We are now producing dresses, which is nice. Uh, we can uh, augment our prompt a little bit. So let's go over here and look at this. We have red hair along a, look at that, we have the word along in there. A, a, let's just get rid of the word a long because I didn't know what it was doing anyway. Let's, let's replace this with uh, some prompts. So red, blue, green, Stripes, right? And we're going to put these inside of braces separated by pipes, and that will mean it will pick a random one each time, right? Uh, and that's uh, that's interesting. We'll just kind of do that. I do like some of the wildcard nodes, and I have installed wildcard nodes on my main machine. But again, where you're using the laptop to do all the work here, and you see it's pretty fast. Where we got, uh, sorry, I'm talking, I'm talking about face with the mic here. Uh, we're getting these images in 10, 10 to twelve seconds. Uh, so that's pretty decent. That's that's faster than my 3090 on this machine. And this is a 4080. This laptop has a 4080 in it. Uh, so it's working very quickly. Oh, let's do this again. Let's do this prompt again. It has to go all the way back here to start each time now because it has to go get our information on the random. So depth, I think depth is probably one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful control net that's out there. Now you see, here's the fault with depth is she's on a blank background with a plain floor and everything that's generated is going to look like this, right? You see the depth of the floor. You can see the problem we're going to be having here, right? But it's doing so many other positives. What can we do to kind of mitigate this? Well, again, some of this is, oh, let's, let's bring this control down here. Some of this has to do with our starts and our stops and things like that lines. Now, a lot of people would reach right for strength. And again, if you're using regular control net, that's the only thing you have is a strength. Let's say, okay, let's just apply this at say 75%, uh, let's do it again. So 75% depth, you, if we watch 
let's start over again. If you watch this this as it generates it, um, you're gonna see from from point one, it's already has the depth set, right? But it's being a little more whimsical with how it's applying it. Think of it like it's 75% transparent. So it's not quite holding the floor, but it's holding her fingers, well, kind of. Kind of, you now we got some scrunchiness going on in here. And her figure's different. Uh, hair's okay. The dress is completely different form. So I'm kind of screwing up the picture by playing with this strength. So if I leave the strength at, at, at 100, but I change the start, and this is, I think, where it's really interesting. Let's say we start, change this to 30%. If we watch the first third of the images being generated by the preview over here, you're going to see how unique they look until the model snaps it back in. This is the kind of the, the way I wrap my brain around it. It's going to render a woman wearing a dress with red hair, right? It's going to render her and she's going to be in the picture guaranteed. And it starts and it starts and all of a sudden it says, oh crap, I need to move what I'm making and shove it into place over the top of where that girl is actually standing. So if we do that, or we think of that mindset, this actually seems to work that way. So here we go. And you see all of a sudden, yoink, it'll try and yank her back into that depth position. Should, what are you doing? Start percentage. All right, that didn't work. Why did that not work? Hmm. That is not what I expected to see. So start percentage should have been, right? Hmm. That is, yeah, so that worked. That's not what I expect. When I expect, when I change this start percent, that's what I expect to see. Well, if I change it to 50, I should expect to see it change about halfway through. It should snap her into the other place. Isn't doing it. It's interesting. I've used this thing so many times to do oh, so many random things. So let's, let's change it the other direction. We'll start from the beginning and we'll go about halfway through. So it should immediately start. And then about halfway through, it's going to go off on another tangent. And we're not leaving it a lot of wiggle room here because these most of the remaining parts, that might be the reason this is failing. Most of the remaining parts of this are already determined by the time it gets to half, right? So let's do that again. But let's change the start percentage to something like 10%. See how that works. So the first 10% should be pretty weird. And then it should snap her. Yeah, there we go. And you can see what it did. Let's start that again. It's going to start drawing a picture and then about halfway or 10% through it has to snap and move what it's doing or try and move what it's doing, which means we end up with the rest of the dress or some other part that was hanging around from the first time. So there we go. That was the problem. I was starting, I was being too aggressive with my start. So 10 is pretty good. Let's move it up a little bit. Uh, by the way, you can scrub on these lanes if you didn't know that. Uh, so if you just want to change something instead of you know, clicking this all the time, you can actually just scrub. Let's do 15%. See what it's going to do. You kind of see what it did. It started and then it kind of said, okay, I have to use this as my, my point of departure. Now, what can I do with it? Uh, and we end up with something that's just kind of interesting. But what this is allowing to do is that the depth map is no longer being held responsible for that floor, right? But it is, but not right away. So we end up with a lot more freedom than if we hold this thing at zero and a hundred. This is, this is interesting. Let's change this to 20% and about, I think, as far as we're going to be able to take it, 20% in. Yep, has to try and fit her in there and it's going to fail because it's already too committed. So that was, a, let's do that again. That was kind of an interesting showing of what's going on here. So it starts and it tries to bring in the other one and you see it fail. So 20% is too much. I'll let this back down to that laptop being too loud. I, I'm so happy with this thing, by the way. Like I bought that MSI laptop and I was like really happy to finally have a new laptop. And it was like, it was, I was never quite happy. Wow. We've made some sort of horrific thing. Okay. Well, I'm saving that one. We have a, uh, <laughs> we have a, at work, we have a cursed art share and uh, yeah, this is going in there. So again, 15 looks like it's a bit aggressive, maybe 12%. So how much wiggle room can I give it before it has to change? All right. 12% looks like it did. Okay. Kind of. Well, Kind of. And I'm, I'm showing you this because I think this is a really great way to, to understand what the depth map is doing as far as holding or trying to hold this thing in place. So I think 10% is probably 0.10 here. 
0.1, 10%. That should be, again, enough to let it start on some wild adventure, give us an interesting background or scene, and then go from there. So if, now if our prompt says something like, um, on the water, let's, on the water. Let's move it up here though. Redhead, red hair on the water. And whatever color dress with, let's do, let's take all these stripes here. Put it. Go. So we're going to get different colored stripes and different colored dress. Again, I have wild cards. I have huge wild card files that are really fun to play with, but uh, I don't want to, again, I don't want to clutter the live stream with uh, too much stuff. Kind of keep it a little bit clean. By the way, I like this one. Look, it gave her a tattoo. <laughs> I was just noticing that. I'm like, get a tattoo. All right. Oh, yeah, before and after. I want to keep those next. Okay, how are we doing on the 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 concept of the pose not changing it's pretty good right the depth map is holding it pretty good uh, but we are getting some movement in the hair that's different each time which i think is really nice uh, but we can control that if we need to but again i've just shown that my depth map is not really the place that i want to do that i think i'm really happy with this setting uh, for this situation so i'm going to leave it alone in fact again i'm going to kind of tuck this stuff together and let's make a group for it and then oops back on that the group, whole group management part of this needs a little bit of love. But again, this is the tiny nodes project, not the comfy project that, that's responsible for these. So we'll just say this is our depth control net here. Now it's a group. I like to group things because then they're easy to remove. In fact, uh, I, if I was doing this in a competition, like if there were a competition right now, mm -hmm. <laughs> I would actually make nodes like this and park them right on the edge. This is how I prefer to create these node groups because then as I'm using these different positives and negatives, for example. This positive to the positive here and this negative here. I like them on the edge like this because then as I move this around, it takes them with me, but I can save this group off and use it again later uh, in other workflows. So I, I tend to do things like this um, so that I can bring them back. Those are templates, by the way. So if you highlight a group of nodes like this, you can right click, don't right click on the nodes. You have to do it off to the side. You can say node templates and then manage or save selected as template. And then we can save this as our um, full net. Yes. By the way, when you name things, a good idea is to name the family first and then what makes it unique. Otherwise you end up with things in non-alphabetical order. So all my control nets will stay together now. So control net depth, control net canny, control net whatever. That's just a good rule in life. So now when I'm doing this, I can do node templates and control net depth and now it's added it right in here. Um, it does not bring the group in with it. I wish it did, but um, currently that is not something it does. Oh well, so uh, I think this is working great, but can we add back in this capability here? Cause I liked the, the ability for the fingers to actually have the individual you know, joints the way they're supposed to be, things along that lines. And sure enough, we can, we can run this, um, the out of this one we can run it into the in of this one. So you just chain them together. It's really not anything special, right? And the positives here, we go to the positive here, all the way down. Right. Now we have two chained together things. We're doing a depth map first and then the candy second. And again, the order is not important. As far as I know, the order is not important. That could be, I could be wrong. The order might be important, but to my knowledge, the order of this operation is not important. Um, some of, there are several that are like concatenation of prompts or and conditioning do matter, uh, but in this case it doesn't matter. So let's cue this prompt again and see what happens. Again, this and you see twenty percent was allowed to kind of do whatever it wanted to do, and then it took over. And you see now we're on some water and we have some lovely weeds in the background, and we get this horrific dress that we have. We're gonna try and sell this dress, okay? And now the fingers look much better. They look like the original girl. Remember, this is a photo I took in Texas, right? It's not an AI generated thing. And I think a lot of us get stuck in the mindset of I'm working in AI. Therefore, everything I'm doing must be AI based. Not the case at all. This is a photo and I'm working with a real world situation of I want, again, hypothetically, if you're just joining late, hypothetically, I want to design a dress 
based on this current dress, but I want different patterns, different ideas. And a firm has hired me to give them this I, these ideas. They don't know, you know, if they're stuck in a creative block or they want to come up with a new line and they have a set of, of colors, perhaps they want to work with. What do they want to do? And I'm just offering different. Now let's make the prompt more interesting. I'm gonna drag the prompt over here. I know I'm kind of making a, my own UI, but that's the way that I use this system when I'm doing it during the day, is I just drag my nodes to where I want them to be and I use them. So I just zoom in and this is where I'm gonna be working. So um, I want, uh, so it's a dress. Um, I wanna say a butterfly. Flutter, butterfly dress with dots. We'll change this. And uh, we are, we're doing some things with uh, how to manage the, you know, the feet. Uh, and I, we came up with a negative prompt here um, that I didn't think would actually work, but <laughs> I did things like even her entire lower body. I'm sure this is not correct, but it was just funny that it worked. And this is where bloodletting happened, right? <laughs> In the Middle Ages. Well, we bled him and he got better. So if you remove blood from somebody, they get better, right? This is the exact same science that's being applied here. Do not take this and say this works every time. It's just dumb luck that it worked. But what part of it made it work? We don't know. We'd have to take it apart and kind of figure it out. And it may just be that this part doesn't need it. We just get rid of this. Um, but yeah, let's do that. Let's just get rid of this part because I don't want to. I don't want to be that guy who's like, "Oh, look, you invented a giant negative prompt from his." Yo. Yeah. So it's just as good without that snide comment in there about her entire lower body being. weird dots all over the picture now. That's interesting. And we got to wonder why that happened, right? It's neat, but now the dress is uh, a little weird, right? Why is it weird? What's going on? Well, we what did we change? We added the, the, the control net for the canny. And again, it's adding this. In fact, let's just move these previews down so they kind of, we're kind of all working together so you can kind of see what it's doing, right? This is the family of items we're dealing with. We have an outline of the dress we have a depth map of the dress or the scene, I should say, not just. These are the two things that we're holding as true. We're not letting this be true until 10% of the way into the image. So we can go ahead and mess with the floor or otherwise we're going to end up with a blank room, right? It's just going to be a box just like it was shot on. just a sweep of paper. And uh, these are the outlines that we're keeping. Now, right now we're keeping the outlines 100% of the time. And they are, they're true. Like that's all we can do. And we can go up here and we can play with this again. Like what's the strength of these dots? How do we know apply that? And maybe we drop it down to 80% or maybe we start late or maybe we end late. I think that's more interesting. Again, maybe we stop forcing where the fingers are and everything. Maybe 80, we can probably even maybe do 60% of the way into this scene because by then all of the different areas of her body will have been established, right? but maybe we can get more hair movement or things like, as you see, we are holding the hair in position with these lines, right? So let's say 60% of the way through the image, this is true. And then afterwards, go ahead and let it fly. And that's kind of what this is doing. Let's see how that works. Okay. So you see, we're still applying it. We're still holding that true. And then about here, it's going to just kind of do what it wants. Well, it's obviously pretty much already established at that point. So maybe 60 is, again, too big a number. Let's borrow this control. Bring it down. And I could rename this one, too, uh, if I need to. So it's called... Uh... By the way, um, once we're done with this adventure today, uh, this workflow will be available for all the channel members, the, the uh, sponsor level or better. So it will be in the... Uh, Google Drive that I have for you guys. So thanks for everybody for supporting this. I really appreciate it. Uh, Scott is on his grind right now. Yeah, <laughs> I am. This is a canny. Uh... Yeah, so this uh, this workflow will be available for everybody supporting the channel. So I really appreciate you guys. So I try and make sure you get these workflows at the end. Uh, it may not be the most colorful thing in the world. You're like, wow, that wasn't really you know super in depth, and I could certainly recreate it. But again, it's what I have. Right here, you go. All right, so let's say let's say about about halfway through, it can stop ignoring, it can start ignoring this canny. Let's try that again. This is doing. Let's say you get a few like it. We appreciate an upscale and to clean it up more. And see the skin is not so great. Yep, we can we can do that. Oh, there we go. 
But for out of the box, that's pretty darn good, right? Our fingers are good. Even though they're complicated, they, they look good. We have basically the same woman, although the red hair has obviously changed, and I'm not going to pick that apart. We could come up with whatever color that is, but we're getting a really interesting scene. Uh, the trouble with this, in my mind, is this depth map again. Is It's the king, right? It's doing so well, but it's also representing the floor here, which I may or may not love. But what else can we do with this thing? So let's let's talk about masking. And somebody called it. They're like, hey, you could do masking. By the way, I'm going to abandon this whole thing down here. I was, I was showing that earlier. We're not going to do anything with that. Um, I talked about that we were going to start out with a fail, and, and that was going to be it. Let's talk about how to mask this off. Now, when I when I do projects like this, I don't want to be um, I don't want it to be something that says this works for this one picture and this only one picture. It's like, oh, every time you want to edit this, all you need to do is right click and then go into the mask editor and and edit and then edit your mask using the, the clunky tools that are in here. Right? No one is going to tell you that that's a great solution for it. We need to do this in an automatic method. Right? One of my favorite ones, I didn't even think about that. It may not be on this laptop. Well, we're going to find out. Again, the laptop, the uh, Gigabyte uh, 17X over here is doing all the heavy lifting for the for the show today. So again, thanks to Gigabyte for, for throwing this at me. Um, a fantastic, fantastic product. Again, I put the, I'll put the link to it down below um, so you guys can see it once the show is over. Um, so we're not even using local machine at all today. But if I needed to, I'm keeping it open because if I need to save you know, save the show because it's going off the rails. I can save this workflow and drag it right into this and we can continue working on the local machine. Um, that's one of the beautiful things about working with Comfy is you just drag and drop the images or anything and it'll work well. Uh, so for this, I want to see if we have Ultralytics on here. We do. So Ultralytics, uh, which is installed with the Impact Pack by default, is a fantastic set of tools. And there's, it comes with three, but there are many more. I probably should have thought that through. We're going to use the person and you see it says seg m person and there's b box face and b box hand you have to make sure you're using the right one here so seg m person which means we have to use the seg m connector if we use the b box one with the seg m model it's going to break which makes sense right uh it's telling you perfectly what it needs uh, but there is no other information there so what do we want to do with this thing i'm going to drag out the seg m and just let it go and it's going to have some options here. We're just going to choose the combined B2. Right? So I'm going to drag the image that we're trying to use is here and then drag mask. And I want to do is I'm going to, I'm going to drag the mask to, I want to preview the mask and I don't have oh yeah, mask the image. Let's do this mask the image and then preview. It. Let's just run it real quick and see what it looks like. Should be hopefully good. on the laptop here to see what it's doing. I think it has to download the model. Because again, I haven't done this before. So um, new laptop, new new models, new things to download. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it's doing. But the fans are going like mad. Well, while that's working, let's talk a bit about everyone who's making this thing happen. Huge thanks to everybody who's supporting the show today. We just passed 300 members. I really appreciate you guys You're doing, right, guys and girls, uh, really helping to keep the show alive. Appreciate you so much. Um, and again, all the files for today and all the previous episodes and previous workflows are all available, plus all the other stuff that I throw into the community area, uh, new links to things. I just gave out a new, um, just given a new workbook to a a collab notebook to use the uh, new Stable Diffusion video API. And again, even if you have no intention of using that API, it is a great way to learn the REST API and see how we're doing things. But I will tell you that there are already clients who are looking for people to help them learn how to use that in their businesses. So you now have a tool that can do it for you. You don't require a lot of heavy lifting as you know a laptop or a big machine or anything because you're using our API. So you sell your services to companies and yeah, you're going to pay, what, pennies? Actions of pennies for our video API, but then you don't have to buy a you know four thousand dollar laptop to do it either. All right, so this finished here. You can see that we got something out of it. It's okay, but what's it going to do for us? So we can use this mask potentially uh, to do some of the heavy lifting of trying to keep this thing together. So if we 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 kind of hinted at what we're going to want here is if I drag this mask, I'm just going to drag it down over here, and there is a 
VAE encode for inpaint. Right? Now this has its own problems and we're gonna see those in a second here, uh, but this is a really interesting idea, right? We're gonna inpaint everything that's white. So let's drag it up here to our latent because uh, that's what we're gonna use latent. We need our VAE here, of course, and we need the actual image, the pixels of the image. So we're using. I don't know why I put it down there. That's where I wanted it, but maybe I maybe I don't put it right. So you can see what it's doing now. It's going to grow the mask by six pixels, and then try and impaint. Now, what's wrong with this picture? Well, what part of this are we trying to impaint? Right, we're trying to impaint the girl, not this. So if we if we run this prompt here, we're going to end up with the opposite. Um, it's going to, <laughs> well, it's going to find out here. Yeah, it's keeping the crappy background in the studio of the original image and then changing the girl completely. But because we have the depth net, the depth control net and the candy control net uh, holding it in place, we're getting something that's kind of passable, but we're going to get all kinds of tearing right in through here because of the roughness of the mask. This is the one reason why the inpainting node or the latent of the, the in-paint is not, it's not one of my favorite methods. This control net method is cleaner, uh, but this is again, another option. So if we if we take this, we need to invert this mask, right? So this mask is backwards. So in here, we can pull this down. It doesn't appear there, but if we need to type the word invert, we can see that invert mask is, so we just drag the mask into this and now we have an inverted mask. We can prove that by obviously throwing it in too. And we need to take the inverted one down to where it's actually being used. So now this mask will be opposite, flipped. And now we do it, we'll end up with a better solution, but we still may get that tearing in and around, in and around the girl. And that's because again, the resolution of the mask is not as good as the resolution of the image. Yeah, you can see all the tearing that we have in here is so it's trying to deal with that uh, in the background. So. It's holding her so that we're not changing her at all, right? But we're changing everything else around it. Are we piping the full size image in for segmentation? Uh, we are not. We are using a, uh, a node to limit the edge, uh, the edge of the of the image. We were using it. Well, maybe I didn't put it on this one. I had it in there. Um, so image scale to side. I will tell you though that I know this image is not obnoxious. Like when I when I clipped it out, I think I did it at 1024. Um, so I know that's not the issue. Get used to Substance Substance Designer has a lot of really great tools for node manipulation, and um, the people who make the Light Nodes project could learn a lot from them as far as usability. But who knows if that's ever gonna. So in here, and we can do, what size do we want this? One at end. Did have eight, 10, there it is, 1150. 11, two. Now, it's, just, it's working, but it's not fantastic, right? This mask tends to look kind of crappy. But we'll see if we can get this to be a little bit better. So we'll try it again with that side thing. But um, I think we're going to end up with the same tearing. This just seems to be part of the way in painting works from uh, this these edges. These edges are just brutal. Plus, we have a gap in here. And if you look at the mask, you can see that we indeed have issues with the mask. The mask is not accurate anymore. It's failing. In fact, it's failing in a hard way. And this is not very good at all. So we need to find a different way to do this. Um, there's a combined things to find me. No, there is another one in here. Let's use the seg stitch. You know, this is going down the rabbit hole for where I don't want to take this, but it could be. I want this thing's combined. I'm just going to type it in because I know what I'm looking for. I just don't know if it's on this laptop. Again, the laptop is, has been barely set up. I tried to keep it as vanilla as possible. Um, 
because they didn't want to have something that was like, oh, hey, look at all this stuff that's already installed. And you guys are like, well, he's he's got it already done. I think it's interesting to watch me kind of flail and figure out what I'm trying to what I'm trying to find, because you have to do the same thing. Find anything. Okay, there we go. So let's do and let's preview this mask here. See what this looks like. This should help. So what I'm doing here, I mean, if you're like, oh my God, what did he just, let's move all this junk out of the way here. That's the old way. So we're using this SEGS detector here. So this is using Ultralytics, it's coming in. We have to bring in the image as well. And then we have a threshold, a dilation, obviously making it bigger around the perimeter, a crop factor, and then a drop size. And, and then this down here is like, what are you looking for? And this is interesting. All, by the way, is usually the best answer down here. But let's look at how much better this mask may be. It'll be here. Let's just run it and see what happens. And there we go. And it looks. Why? Sure. Act pack. Ultra Lakes is finding it. These thresholds are still the same. Let's change our threshold. One, two. How about in the other direction? Seven. Uh, I should be able to get a better answer out of this. I'm also typing the words like dress and this is why you always use the word all because they're not really sure what these wild card fields up, appear in a lot of different nodes and sometimes you can put in what you want to put in and sometimes you can't. Um, I should get a much better mask than that out of this. Not very happy with that mask. In my opinion, that is terrible. What can I do to make it better? Anything better. You know what? It was better before I image scaled it. So let's do that. Let's let's take it off the scale. At least then it fills this side in. Let's do that. Let's get rid of all this. Here's my plan. We're going to use segs here. Combine it to get the mask, right? But what I'm going to do is... Uh, because this mask looks so much better here, right? I think that's kind of our answer is we're just going to use this mask from this point forward uh, to use for the impaint. So where's my impaint? Uh, I deleted that before I had it. Deleted all that stuff. Back to where we were. So what do we do? What was this whole train wreck about up here? What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a mask using segs here, right? But I'm not getting a great result. But ultimately the problem with this in my mind is the, the tearing that occurs around the image. By the way, you can use the middle boss button to navigate without actually grabbing the image, grabbing these things. So the tearing because of the, the resolution of the mask is just not great. Uh, we could do uh, another thing. Right now we're applying our mask here via encoding, right? And we're growing the mask. Let's not grow the mask. Let's, go, let's keep the mask at zero and see what happens. And we're going to get, we can see the pixels of the mask in here. So this is probably not going to look good either. So let's cancel that. But what else can we do? Are there any other things that kind of help with this? I don't think this helped us. I thought we had a better solution beforehand. So it just goes to show you that overcomplicating things doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get a better result. I think this depth is not required here. In my mind, this was not a positive. I think this original latent here was a better latent. This. So much easier to look at. But, I mean, that's that's not obviously the goal, but it's nice when that happens. And I think our our candy at 50%. So we start at zero. We start applying candy immediately. So it holds the fingers in place. Uh, but at halfway through, which might still be a bit too far along, let's we'll say back this up to 30%, um, that it's allowed to start changing stuff. So if we watch this with the bar at the top there. Oh, I have a problem. Node disconnected somewhere. I'm 
Whenever whenever it flies too fast, you know. Can I? Oops, work better, but they'll get there, right? It's not a UI. It's the it's a back end first. So 30% through it has to hold the canny and then it's allowed to do whatever it wants to do. So it's adding all the extra hairs or things, but the fingers might be a little bit too free. So let's take that and I actually kind of want to up the resolution of this Laris depth net here. So it's the same 1152. Make it a more accurate depth map. And let's apply the canny. A little bit later in the game, I think point four, because we're losing fingers. Candy is the only thing that's holding those in place. All right, again. Smooth jazz has me feel like I'm in a dining club establishment. Yes, dinner and a show. There you go. Fingers are better ish. Yep, yeah, fingers are better. Uh, and we're getting more. Uh, more interesting places because the depth map has allowed some wandering around. So if we were to go to the client now, um, how is this looking? I think again, I think this candy is still a bit too. Because I'm not, you see this finger here is missing this finger here. If you haven't worked with ba ballerinas before, I, I, I've worked with her. I think this is my second time. It is next level because it's I mean, obviously a beautiful art form, but it is everything is so either right or wrong. Like if her foot is facing the wrong direction, even slightly, they consider it to be this big atrocity. And we're like, hey, that's a great picture. And they're like, oh, my God, don't show anybody that they're going to think I'm an idiot. And we don't know better. We show the world and they go, wow, you're a horrible photographer because you should have known that's a terrible pose. I learned a lot about shooting dancers. And wow. I mean, it's just it is so much you got to be careful about um, that you don't even think about because we don't know. You know, what you don't know. All right, so I think this dress is looking kind of terrible. So let's go and change it to, uh, let's just leave it, uh, get rid of the color mandate here. No water, uh, wild butterfly. We'll just let it do what it wants to do. Uh, and we'll get rid of all this other mandate for this. So, and now let's do some, it's like highly detailed, right? Uh, let's throw the word fractal in there. I like the word fractal. Uh, volumetric. Another one I like. Uh, if I can spell it, volumetric. Uh, that's kind of like fog in the in the distance. Uh, who knows? Again, the depth map is the one who takes control of this. Let's run it again and see if we're getting closer to. It. Again, the idea is to feature dresses with the clients, but yet have proper finger positions and let the dress kind of be what it wants to be. And there we go. So by lifting the mandate of dress colors, now it's actually able to shine and do what it wants. So now I should be able to really kind of let this thing do what it wants to do. So let's put our, our GUI back together. So I'll put the preview back up here for that. Put the preview for back up here. Just so that we have them. There's one control net. There's another control net. Got two control nets being applied to this. Again, I put this graph in the community area for all the sponsor channel sponsors. Again, thank you guys and girls so much for your support, especially Tomac, who is the only channel God at the moment. I had a few over the last year or so, which blows my mind. You guys are amazing. And then we'll put the, we'll put the prompt back over here. All right, so we reassembled this thing. Now we're in a situation where we can start cranking out images for our client, right? So a few other things that are interesting. And this is not the turbo model. We're still producing an image about every 10 seconds uh, using SDXL and 20 steps. And, and we're getting a really nice image. Uh, if we wanted to upscale this, then I would look at using the SD Ultimate Upscaler. That's pretty much the way I upscale everything. I'm very happy with the way that works. By the way, if you like the show and, and whatever, please click the like button. And again, we have people coming and going. Um, and we have about uh, two thirds of the people have clicked the like button. So again, if you like it, please, please show your appreciation there. All right, so another thing here is this extra options button up here. You can auto queue. And then now this is a preview. We haven't actually saved. I'm going to save this. We actually saved a single image this entire time. So I'm going to go here. And I'm just going to click save image. So we actually start saving these to the hard drive. So I don't like miss them. So if I hit this, it's going to queue one, render it. 
and we have this set to increment so we're going to random one every time And as soon as it's done, it should queue another one. Now the laptop's going to start sweating here in a second. If we could look up the different styles of butterflies, we could do monarch, we could do swallowtail, we could do whatever, uh, and and have it go nuts. But I think we're getting some really interesting stuff. So someone said, "Hey, we want to do some butterfly theme themed dresses. We're looking for ideas for fabrics, things along these lines. Can you give us some thoughts?" Here we go, we can start cranking them out. Yes, we could probably do something to make sure that it's the same girl each and every time, uh, but we tried that with in-painting and we really didn't like that too much. We could try adding a control net to this. My fear with control net is the control net is going to control the dress design too tightly, right? Um, I want it to kind of be um, be free to do whatever it wants to do. I don't, uh, the girl's hair, okay, we could do, also do what's called regional prompting. Um, I need to actually do a separate video on that where we can apply a prompt only to a region. Uh, it will allow it to change the rest of the image, um, but the rest of it we want to be open. Uh, you've seen a video to fix hands using open pose control net uh, to edit the number of fingers in Photoshop and reuse the image. Yeah, the thing is though, this is working really well. Like I'm getting I'm getting pretty much the proper fingers. If we, if we change this control net up a bit more, this canny, to say 70%, I think that that would eliminate any of that. Wait, you guys hear that laptop? I'm very happy with this thing, by the way. Like, I have to say that. Because people send me stuff all the time, and I'm like, whatever. But I'm really, really happy with this one. That MSI one, I kind of had buyer's remorse for the whole time. Although, like, when I go and I speak at different conferences, I have to have something I can do inference on locally because I don't have access to my main machine. And this is, like, a really good test for me to see if this was actually going to be able to pull its weight on these things. Um, let me actually switch back to that. You guys can see it. There we go. You can see it's actually pounding these things out pretty readily here. Once those tags get off the bottom of the screen there. But that's on a laptop. So, yeah, I'm very, very happy with this thing. Moving right along. So here's our dress designs, all butterflies and whatever, and I'm very happy with it. We tried to implement uh, another type of masking for in-painting, and I think we ended up with a lot of tearing. What we ended up with here looks pretty darn good. Again, it's, this is, what's this doing? Like, think about what this is doing uh, from the big picture standpoint. Let me go back to this ATEM here. Um, what this is doing from a big picture standpoint is showing how we can implement uh, a stable diffusion solution for a client that's a real world, a real world situa situation. So clients like we want to be able to come up with different designs. We are looking for ideas. We spend months and months and months. And this is a very true statement. Textile designers spend months trying to come up with ideas, just brainstorming things that are different and unique. And then they want to put them out and, and show them to the world and try and get other people to, to understand whether or not that they're going to be pertinent. And if we can shortcut that process for them so that their designers are able to produce more winning images more quickly, that means that they have better sales on the rack. The stores you know, have, have better movement and product, which means more things get stuff, get sold, more jobs get made and so on. So I really like using a lot of this, uh, this technology in real world situations to see what we can do with it. Like there's so much to be done here. Uh, I'd like to see control net pose input just to see if it'd be over constrained. I think the control net works fine most of the time, but I think it still has issues with fingers. Now there are like DW open pose, which is better than regular open pose, it uses the Onyx system, which means it's another 30 seconds uh, in a loading time initially. Um, and that's not a big deal, but I don't know that it adds that much better control of hands, uh, especially when there's such a minor part of, the, of this. If there were hands that were you know, large and in charge in the scene or holding something, that's more important. I think it's a bigger issue, uh, but I didn't want to kind of go down the pose band, the, the pose bandwagon or the pose direction because pose is very cool, but pose opens a whole lot of other problems for us to deal with. And I think that'd be a great separate live stream or a great separate video to cover because you're not wrong. I think it's a great product, uh, but the, the idea behind the live stream here is to kind of show how we could use this and let's say let's be constrained let's use just a few tools what few tools can we use are there better ways to do this in three months this will probably be old news and there'll be a brand new way to do it there'll be a lot better but right now i'm able to actually open the doors and i've done this this is a very true statement we have gone to manufacturers and said let us help you with your ideation workflow and we've implemented 
stable diffusion in that workflow to say, let's help designers brainstorm quickly, especially when Turbo came along. You know, to be able to go and manipulate through these things very quickly has been fantastic. Now, with 0, 1, 2, 3 and some of these other ones like this, we can actually start to rotate the product and do things like that. That's cool, but it has no practical application that I've found yet. Now, again, it's very, very new. The trouble we you kind of got to keep in mind is that when you're trying to sell a product, the, the product, the picture of the product that's on the box needs to actually be the product. That's called truth in advertising. So uh, we always, you always hear people like talk about when you photograph ice cream, just use mashed potatoes because they won't melt and you have more time to take the picture. That's very true unless you're selling ice cream. If you are selling the ice cream you're taking a picture of, you cannot use mashed potatoes. You have to actually use the ice cream you're selling. That's truth in advertising. The same thing applies to all the images we're producing here. We cannot sell this dress and say, this is the dress you're buying because this is not a photo of that dress, right? It is an AI representation of that dress. And that's not truth in advertising. And if someone gets this dress and said, that's not what I ordered, you have to refund it and you're going to go out of business because that's not going to work very well. So we have to walk that fine line. You know, everyone who's, I think, in this channel here, you're probably looking at this as like, how do you wrap a business around this? How do you do things around it? understanding the ramifications of where this fits in the workflow for somebody and what you're trying to sell. We are not selling a picture of this girl to anybody, right? What we're doing is we're using this to try and help people design a better dress or a theme. Like you were going to go to a Ren Fair and say, I'm trying to come up with some really creative armor ideas. Let's use this to create really creative armor ideas. We could do this dress as armor. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that. I don't know. You can do that. You download this workflow and you play with it and you come up with some armor dresses. And that's maybe an idea that somebody's going to say, I want to make that out of leather. I'm going to make that out of chain mail or skein mail. And then you're going to sell it. You've given them ideas. You give them a place to go to, to get those ideas. You know, like you become your, the idea person. And then that's one of the really great things I love about this. I don't use it as a finished product very often. I use it more as an ideation process, uh, but that's just one aspect of this whole thing. There's so many ways you can take this. And again, it's not even, it's what, a little over a year old. I've worked for stability now. Is it 14 months now? What a wild ride it's been. And I, I can't wait to see where we're going, you know, in the future. And all the stuff that we can do is just really, really wild. But um, anyway, that's the live stream for today. You know, I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. I appreciate the, the, the two new people who joined today and we passed 300 members. I appreciate Gigabyte for sending the uh, 17X laptop over. And again, we're using that for inference on this. So we'll be using that for uh, inference um, from now on. And I'm going to try and move all the models and stuff over here that I'm using. And again, I don't use a lot, so it's not a big deal. I use like maybe two or three Loras. Like plenty, but let's explore them more. I like exploring the Loras. I'm going to uh, produce the next video. I'm going to do us more on how to really bend a Lora to make it do what you want it to do. Because we apply Loras with a strength, but there's a lot more you can do with the Lora. You can interrupt how it's interfacing with the unit down below. All kinds of cool stuff in there. So we'll do that in the future. I, I could try and get that video out in the next couple days or so, but appreciate everybody hanging out with me today. Again, thank you very much. Uh, we'll put the patron screen up at the end. But again, I really appreciate you guys. And please make sure you tick the community area in YouTube here because that's how I have to communicate with you. YouTube doesn't have a great method like Patreon does. And I really don't want to move over to Patreon. I kind of want to keep things here on YouTube because then that way you guys have much easier access to the videos and trying to have a Vimeo login and all that kind of crap. Let's just keep it here. But make sure you check that area, right? Even if you're not a member, I do post things there for non-members from time to time. But... Uh, if you remember, you're going to get this workflow and a lot of other stuff I got coming out. I, I try and post something every week. guys. So, oh, And there's new embeddings coming out as well. I'm maybe you guys embeddings that you can use with the IP adapter to add manipulation at an artistic level to some of the imagery. So no matter what model you're using or Laura, you end up with kind of a uh, kind of a different look, which is my goal. I'm trying to make these more artistic. The whole photogenic idea, it's cool, but it, it's not really my core interest. It might be yours, but it's not mine. Uh, but again, these tools are for your interpretation. All I'm doing is trying to teach you how to use them. Everybody take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you all next time.